Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 Today. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with me here on NBC 16 Today. I'm Zach Brule. Angela Yamamoto is off today. We'll get to your top stories in just a moment, but first, as usual, we'll take a peek outside. What we're experiencing weather-wise as we get started this morning, it's a cool start to the day. But as that sun continues to rise out there, this is a beautiful shot over Roseburg, we're going to continue to see a warming trend take hold. That's because cloud coverage, those rain opportunities that we've been seeing for the past five or six days are a you know, kind of thing of the past. Yesterday was the last little bit of it, kind of the last dump of very minimal moisture uh, throughout the region yesterday. And then with the clouds dissipating, the cool opportunity or the cool air was able to creep back in overnight and into the morning. So a rather chilly start to the day. But as we head forward today, you're going to see very minimal opportunities for rain or cloud coverage, which means as we go forward, you're going to see that warming trend we've been kind of talking about being on the horizon begin to really take hold over the next couple of days. I mean, first, we've got to clear out of this, being that they cooled down so much overnight. We're with the wind chill right now looking at anywhere between the high 20s to the low 40s as we wake up this morning. But as you head forward, we're going to get much, much warmer. It should be a clear sunny day throughout the day and get us up towards the mid 60s before the afternoon and evening hours roll around and that warming trend will continue as we head forward. Chief Meteorologist John Mayer is going to join us in a few minutes. He'll tell us if we have a chance at flirting with some record highs over the next 48 to 72 hours. So stick around for that. Yesterday, hundreds of students students rather rallying as a pro-Palestinian encampment is at risk of being removed by the university. It's been 10 days since students first began camping on the UO campus with the intention of protesting the war and demanding the university divest its funds in Israel. Now, the university president released a statement saying the university has a long history of using an engagement first approach and says they have done so with this encampment with daily meetings expressing concern for safety and to inform students that they're in violation of school policies. Went on to say, quote, the encampment nevertheless presents three critical problems for campus. First, it violates longstanding university rules designed for the safety and well-being of all our students. Second, the encampment is a problematic drain on scarce resources that are currently being diverted from our educational mission. Third, as we, like you, watch similar events play out on college campuses across the nation, we are concerned about the potential for outside groups to increase or escalate what had begun as a student-led protest. We have already seen what appears to be anti-Semitic provocation at UO and worry these harmful efforts will grow. And even with the threat of the encampment being removed from the lawn and the night light right in front of the night library, students have remained. Tiffany Lewis spoke to students and faculty as tensions rise. University administrators warning of consequences for Students for Justice in Palestine as negotiations come to a standstill. Hundreds of protesters, both students and faculty, rallying in defiance. They, they want to silence us and we have to show them that we're louder. Look at the amount of people here. They, they, we have to show them that we are bigger than them and this cause is bigger than them and this cause is bigger than us. This cause is bigger than anyone. As UO revokes academic amnesty for student protesters, warning that the camp will be removed and their demands will not be met, faculty members signed a letter of support for the protesters as they too demand divestment and condemnation of Israel. For me, when we talk about freedom on university campuses, we need to think about you know freedom for whom and freedom from what and safety for whom and safety from what. Uh, and for me, as a faculty member here, I am concerned about our administration's lack of ability to negotiate in good faith. On Monday, multiple Jewish organizations wrote open letters to the university, asking them to take action and dismantle the camp. Members of Ducks for Israel tabled outside of the EMU, a show of solidarity for Jewish and Israeli students, and against what they call growing intimidation and anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism are not always the same thing. A lot of times they end up becoming the same thing. Um, we had a hostage event a few weeks ago, and I was told people were just um, anti-Zionist, but I was specifically told that my religion is death and I'm a blood-sucking genocidal freak. Several Jewish students are active leaders of the encampment, including members of Jewish Voice for Peace. I did ask for an interview with those students, but they were not available. In the face of the university's refusal to meet the camp's demands, protesters say they are not giving up. 
Um, as of now, our plan remains the same. We plan to stay here until our demands are met. Um, the conversation has been had since before day one about the risks that we are assuming as students participating in this action. So um, it's nothing that we weren't prepared for and the plan stays the same. While UO President Schulz confirmed that the university will move forward with the student conduct process, citing multiple policy violations and concerns, it's still unclear what specific actions will be taken to remove the camp. In Eugene, I'm Tiffany Lewis reporting. Thank you, Tiffany. In other news, one year from today, you will not be able to fly without a re with rather a regular driver's license or ID card. Instead, you will need real ID, the requirement that was supposed to take an effect in 2008, but has been repeatedly delayed. Now, in late 2022, the deadline was extended until 2025. You can use a passport for flights abroad and domestic, but if you don't have one, you'll need an ID instead. And you'll need to use a real ID at that, which has enhanced security features. Salem Bureau reporter Christina Giardinelli has more. Starting May 7th of next year, you'll need a real ID or passport to get on a plane. Amy Joyce, Oregon's DMV administrator, says the process is not the same as renewing an old ID or driver's license. So to get a real ID, you must come into a DMV field office. You're going to need to bring very specific documents. It cannot be done online. She says you can book an appointment online or just walk in. The cost to upgrade the real ID is $30. If you're replacing a stolen or expired ID or driver's license, the standard costs will be added on as well. Joyce urges Oregonians not to wait till the last minute. As the enforcement date gets closer, we know there's going to be a big rush at DMVs, so get in sooner than later. If your license is up for renewal, you can renew up to a year in advance. I'm Cristina Giardinelli reporting. Republican candidate for Congress Monique Despain says public safety is priority number one in her campaign. And in a press conference yesterday, Despain announced endorsements from law enforcement officials. That Monique Despain is the kind of fighter for public safety, law enforcement, and crime victims that we need in Washington, D.C. With Monique serving the 4th District in Congress, we can turn the tide and restore the rule of law bring back safe neighborhoods, and once again see crime victims protected as they deserve to be. Despain made her stance clear as a supporter of law enforcement and committed to making sure they get the funding they need. I will sign on to the bipartisan legislation, H.R. 3321, the Defund Cities That Defund Police Act, a bill that prevents taxpayer dollars from funding cities that have defunded law enforcement. The Spain also said if elected, she will prioritize national security and border policy. We need secure uh, borders on our, uh, for our country to keep our communities safe. We're seeing the result of an open border right here in our communities in the 4th District. The Spain has also received letters of support from Coos County Sheriff Gabe Fabricio, Curry County Sheriff John Ward, and Lynn County Sheriff Michelle Duncan. The election is coming up on May 21st, which means you have just under two weeks to turn in your ballot for Oregon's primary election. Ballots were sent out last week. Now, anyone who doesn't have theirs by tomorrow should contact their county elections office for a new one. Ballots can be returned to any official drop site location. You can also mail them as long as they're postmarked on or before election day, which again is Tuesday, May 21st. <laughs> And the Eugene Police Department is tackling mental health with some additional resources. EPD has added a behavioral health professional to the department's downtown team. The addition is meant to improve response for low to moderate risk calls by bringing a licensed mental health professional in plain clothes to help calm situations and reduce the number of arrests. The program is meant to complement CAHOOTS. It's part of the city's co-responder program, which is mostly funded by the city's community safety payroll tax. Now, drivers, get ready to start your engines. Rav racing season is revving up soon in Douglas County with the dirt track in Roseburg set to open after a variety of new upgrades. Now, our Rico Aguilera went to the track to see what makes this place the place to go. Just this was something that I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to bring better racing to the community. Over $100,000 worth of projects have been underway to improve the dirt track. 
The last major project was asphalt resurfacing in 2002. Since then, there have been few upgrades of this magnitude. This structure is this year, I believe, 50 years old and hasn't had a lot of repairs and upgrades to it. So we're trying to bring that to it. So not only when we're holding our events, but like they had the rodeo during the fair and stuff, there's gonna be some large improvements there that directly go back to the community. In 2022, the Douglas County Fairgrounds begin a new contract with the Roseburg Race Promotions to help operate the dirt track. Meanwhile, the track has been applying for grants and teaming up with local businesses to get these upgrades completed. Some of the work that's been done includes the refitting of the bleacher seats and converting a full-length dirt surface for racing. There'll be a lot of people in the area, and the dirt track racing is very popular around here, and a lot of people like to watch it, so the grandstands capacity. I mean, a lot of people have been showing up and it's just been building and building last year and obviously this is year number two and we're looking forward to another exciting year to just keep building. The Douglas County Dirt Track is set to have their first race of the season May 10th. Reporting in Roseburg, I'm Rigo Aguilera. Mother's Day is fast approaching. It is this Sunday and NBC 16 is hosting a giveaway contest all for mom. We want to hear from you why your mom deserves to win an amazing prize package worth over $1,000. Our panel of NBC 16 judges will select two lucky moms who will each receive the following prizes. $100 gift cards to Bello Day Spa, Gray's Garden Center, and Unrefined Wellness Bar, a $100 Visa gift card, and facial treatment from Dr. Lee Daniel. $100 gift cards to Checkerberry's Flowers and Gifts in Coos Bay, as well as Shark Bites in Coos Bay a wildlife safari adoption package, which includes four drive through admissions and dinner, drinks, and dessert for two at Elizabeth Wine Lounge. And to top it all off, get your yard spring ready with a unit of hemlock mulch provided by Rexius. Now to enter your mom in the contest, head to our web website or scan this QR code on your screen and tell us in your own words why your mom deserves to win. Now be creative and heartfelt as our judges will read through each entry and select those two deserving winners.